colleagues, on this very special evening, it gives me great pleasure to um, introduce and welcome, on your behalf, a very special guest. Um, this is a man whom you all know very well. He's um, stuck with this organization through the good times and the bad, the, uh, the lean times and the fat times, and, um, and he's shown his commitment to BBC Motoring by attending every possible working breakfast, working lunch, <laughs> and working dinner. And he's come here tonight to answer your questions, so would you please give a very warm BBC Motoring welcome to Sir Crispin Mildew. <laughs> I couldn't help um, but notice... Um... Oh, yes, my moustache. Yes, uh, I think it gives me more gravitas, don't you? No, I, I was thinking more about your, how, how shall I put it, rather unconventional headgear. Oh, this, yes. Well, you see, as you know, staff morale is at an all-time low right now. So it was decided to appoint someone to... Uh, lift the mood, to lift people's spirits, to reintroduce laughter and jollity into the workplace. So when Steve Watchum turned down the job, <laughs> I was the best placed candidate. And um, so, so, so you're a kind of court jester then, are you? Uh, that's right. My official title is Corporate Mood Enhancement Coordinator. <laughs> Well, I'm sure your answers to our questions tonight are going to go a long way towards lifting the mood of everybody here. So, can we have our first question, please? Uh, from Mike. Uh, Sir Crispin, uh, what initiatives have you come up with yourself to improve staff morale? Sir Crispin, what are the initiatives that you yourself have, have proposed to lift staff's morale? Well, quite a few, actually, but I think the one that has made a real difference is the new canteen. I gather it was your own design. Yes, that's right. I was really quite surprised when the BBC asked me to come up with some plans um, because of my disability. Uh, your, your disability, but, but surely now in, the, in these days when there's so much emphasis on diversity and equality, uh, that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, what exactly was your disability? Colour blindness. <laughs> So that would explain the hospital green walls, um, the, the crimson curtains, and the orangey-brown liner on the floor. Yes, a, a stroke of retro, postmodern, ironic genius, <laughs> even, though, even though I say so myself. <laughs> and the, the white flat-packed tables and the, and the brown formica picnic benches, were, were they your idea as well? Oh, yes, they were indeed, and what a good deal that was. <laughs> Fifty pounds the lot. <laughs> You, do, you mean, do you mean BBC Motoring only paid £50 for all those tables and chairs? Oh, no. IKEA paid us £50 <laughs> to take them away. You see, apparently they've been trying to shift the stuff for years. Have you come up with any other schemes to lift staff morale? Yes, my latest has been very successful. Uh, what was that? Abolishing the director's monthly... Uh, briefing at the video wall. You can't imagine how that has cheered people up. <laughs> Let's have another question. Our second question. Somewhere at the back there. Yeah? Sir Crispin, how do you react to the, to the news we were, we were told um, not long ago that, that BBC Motoring is going to have to save nearly three quarters of a million pounds a year just to survive? I am concerned. Deeply concerned. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I gather at your recent leadership breakfast um, you discussed this shortfall. I wouldn't call it that. You wouldn't call it a shortfall? I wouldn't call it a leadership breakfast. <laughs> it, it, it was more of a leadership roll and butter, barely enough to keep body and soul together. <laughs> but going back to the current financial situation, some people have described it as a, a crisis, 
Um, others a disaster. Some people are even talking about meltdown. Uh, what, uh, what, what do you say about this? Well, I think it was very well put in the March brief, where it was described as a challenge. <laughs> Rather like the, the war on terror is a challenge. <laughs> Precisely. So I immediately suggested to Dr. Wetsuit that motoring, <laughs> that motoring should appoint a finance director or an accountant at the very least. And what did he say? Well, <laughs> you like this. He said, <laughs> he said, <laughs> we already have a finance director. <laughs> And people say he has no sense of humour. <laughs> but how can motoring actually make any more savings? I mean, they've already cut 90 jobs. I mean, that's about a third of the editorial staff here. Well, um, Peter Robinson, um, you may have heard of him. He works here occasionally. Um, <laughs> he came up with the truly brilliant idea of charging staff to use the car park. Well, I said to him that I thought £10 an hour was a bit steep. So um, we decided on a scheme to help staff with the car parking fees. Uh, and how would that work? Well, each manager would get a grant for their fees. <laughs> and, and, and what about everybody else? Well, staff on lower grades would be eligible to apply for a loan at very competitive rates. In fact, we've decided to call the scheme Competitive Rate Assisted Parking. <laughs> competitive Rate Assisted Parking. Um, that's crap, isn't it? Uh, I'm sorry you see it like that. I, I thought it was rather a good idea. But um, realistically, would this scheme change very much? I mean, £700,000 I mean, it's, it's an amazing figure. Talking of amazing figures, is that a foxy little Irish filly still around? <laughs> you mean the one that plays the clarinet? Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is, but um, not for much longer. Is she a girl? <laughs> Well, she does have a bit of a reputation, but I, I wouldn't quite go that far. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, what I meant is, is she leaving? Oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm afraid so, yes. Oh, that's a great shame, because, you see, I've just taken up the clarinet myself, and, um, well, <laughs> I was hoping to um, have a duet with her. <laughs> I was even thinking of um, showing her my instrument. <laughs> It's an antique, you know. <laughs> Moving swiftly on.